Hey, what's up, guys? It's Dark and Duels, and today we're going to be doing a Dark Lord deck profile. So this is, hands down, one of my favorite decks of all time, and I absolutely love playing around with Dark Lords, especially since we got the new support with the first Dark Lords. It, this deck is absolutely crazy and is super, super fun to play around with. So without further ado, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell there so you can come part of the Notification Squad, and definitely check out the Patreon down the description below for all those awesome rewards, like getting your name, description, every single video, getting assigned cards in the mail, and even getting to request a deck profile every single month to your patron, along with testing. Hand. So, without further ado, let's get straight on into this. So, first off, we're going to be playing a single copy of Dark Lord Morningstar. So, this card has always, in my opinion, been insane. We can't be special summon, and if this card is tribute summon, you get to special summon Dark Lord monsters from your hand and or deck up to the number of effect monsters your opponent controls. And then, while you control another Dark Lord monster, your opponent cannot target this card with card effects. And then, once per turn, you can send the top cards off the top of your deck to the graveyard, equal to the number of Dark Lord monsters on the field. And if you do, you gain 500 life points for every single Dark Lord that was sent to the graveyard which is really really nice just to be able to send those cards to the graveyard because a lot of your dark lord spells are going to go off in the grave we then play three copies of dark lord a shell so basically what dark lord a shell does is all the dark lords from here out basically share an ability to be able to um pay a thousand life points to copy a spell or trap in the graveyard that's a dark lord spell or trap and shuffle it back into the deck they're basically the new dark lords kind of like effects because there's been like a couple of waves of dark lords and these all the ones that have this kind of artwork kind of have that effect which is kind of neat so basically what this card does also is you can discard this card in another dark lord from your hand and then after you discard this another dark lord you get to draw two cards which is really nice i play same copy of tesla pack of poka tesla pack of poka is really good because if a Dark Lord monster you control would be destroyed by battle or by card effects, you can discard this card instead. And it also has the ability that during either player's turn, you can uh, pay a thousand life points, target a Dark Lord spell or trap in your graveyard, apply that effect, and then shuffle that target into the deck. And you only need each effect this card once per turn, which is really nice because a lot of your spells and traps just go off again on your opponent's turn. It's just really crazy. We then play the same copy of Nirgal. Uh, Nirgal is really good because if a fairy monster uh, is on your side of the field and it attacks, it can inflict piercing damage, which is really good and it also has the uh copy effect as well on this one we play two copies of nastin nastin lets you send two dark lord cards from your hand to the graveyard to special summon this card and it also has the copy effect but sending two cards from your hand to the graveyard can come in really really handy with this card because sending like a copy of superbia and one of your traps to the graveyard it just comes in really handy because it's a great extender in this build i play a soon copy of omidus as well omidus can discard itself in another dark lord card to add a dark lord card from your graveyard to your hand which yes it is a minus one but sometimes it does come in quite handy to discard Almadus and another card from your hand like a copy of superbia to be able to get your graveyard set up we did play three copies of Superbia. Superbia is really, really, really good in this deck because the Superbias are basically here to get you all sorts of crazy plays because the Superbia is every time it revives itself from the graveyard or when this card is special summoned from the graveyard, you get to target a uh, fairy monster in the graveyard and accept another copy of itself and special summon that target. Now, the only downside of this card is it says win. Um, and so it sometimes misses timing, which is a little bit unfortunate. But like, for example, if you activate one of your copy effects with contact and this card comes out then the shuffling back is the last thing to occur and so it kind of misses timing which is a little bit bad but getting a card like monster reborn or just regularly activating contact to revive it it will go off so that's something to keep in mind about this deck is it does sometimes miss timing with the superbia so keep that in mind as you play this deck we then play a single copy of Dark Lord Zerato. Dark Lord Zerato is a really neat card because it has the ability that if you have four more dark monsters with different names in your graveyard, you can tribute some of this card by tributing one dark monster. You're never going to tribute some of this card, though. You're basically just going to special summon it out with Superbia. And then you can send a dark monster from your hand to the graveyard to destroy all monsters your opponent controls, which is basically Rageki. And if you do activate this effect, destroy this card during the end phase, which kind of sucks, but at the same time, it balances the card. We then play three copies of the Indulged Dark Lord, which is the single best normal summon in the entire deck. Because if this card is normal or special summon, you get to take two Dark Lord monsters from your hand and or deck and special summon one to your opponent's field and add the other to your hand, which is really nice because you special summon the other one to your opponent's side of the field in defense position, which which can be something like a superbia or the next card that we're going to play and you basically are just going to help set up your graveyard and help you get some bricks out of the deck but you're also getting to search your deck for any dark lord monster on normal summon this card is absolutely great in the deck 
We then play a single copy of Ukubak. Ukubak is the card that you sometimes summon. If you want to summon something that has low attack points and low defense against your opponent, especially if you're going first and you don't want to have to deal with the 2900 beat stick against you when your opponent switches that Superbia to attack position, I usually give my opponent the Ukubak because if this card is normal or special summon, you send a Dark Lord card from your deck to your graveyard which is pretty good, but I usually don't normal summon it. I usually am just using this with the indulge to give it to my opponent so they get a thousand defense point monster. And sometimes if you're playing against stuff like Dragon Link, you can actually use this to clog up your opponent's zones, which is kind of nice um, because they're usually going to be trying to use dragons the majority of the turn anyway. So this card can actually be kind of nice. We then play two copies of Arc Lord Christia. Arc Lord Christia is bonkers in this deck because you can special summon this card if you have four more fairies in the graveyard and then neither player can special summon while this card's on the field, which is great. It's really easy to put four fairies in the graveyard with this deck and then once you summon this card to your side of the field, you're basically shutting your opponent's entire field down, and which is really nice. We then play three copies of Cyframe Gear Gamma and a single copy of Driver. Now, the reason I'm playing it in this build, I wasn't playing this in any of the previous builds, but what this card does for the deck is so nice because you're playing a lot of draw power cards in this deck. And so basically, if you activate Banishment and your opponent tries to Ash Blossom you, then you can just Cyframe Gear Gamma, Driver them, and then you get an, a copy of... Um, you get a copy of Omega. So you're basically ripping your opponent for two. And so this card is really, really, really good if your opponent tries to Ash Blossom you going first because you're going to get those cards on your field. And a lot of your cards resolve in the hand, especially like that was a problem when I was playing this deck before and I would carry it to like locals or something. I would activate like a trade in and then I would activate Banishment or Allure and I, they would just immediately Ash me. And I would be like, well, there goes like one to two cards that I just lost. But now playing this, in the deck I don't do that it doesn't happen anymore because I don't have to worry about it that much and this card is really 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 good in this deck so that's it for the monsters guys let's get into the spells so for the spells, we're going to be playing a single copy of Monster Reborn because you already play like six copies of this card and then actually seven with Superbia if you count Superbia. So having an extra Monster Reborn is nice. We play a single copy of Reasoning because if you guys didn't notice, all of your Dark Lords have different levels. And so this is really easy to actually get a free special summon off this card. We play three copies of Allure of Darkness. The Allure of Darkness is just really nice to help you get draws in this deck. We play three copies of Trade-In. The three copies of Trade-In are ridiculously good in this deck too because you discard a copy of say Superbia or you discard a copy of say your Dark Lord Zerato or your copy of Christia to the graveyard and you immediately get to draw two is really nice and it's also bait for Ash because your opponent tries to Ash you can just Gamma them which is really nice to be able to grip two cards out of their hand because they're going to hit the hand trap and then you're also going to hit a card out of their hand with Omega so it's really nice to just do that against your opponent and then we play three copies of Dark Lord Contact Dark Lord Contact is the other monster born that I was talking about. Now, what I was mentioning earlier about Superbia and missing timing is, is if you copy this from the graveyard and you shuffle it back into the deck, the Superbia misses timing, unfortunately. But you do get to activate it. If you just activate this card as a regular spell card, the Superbia won't miss timing, which is great. And it lets you special summon a Dark Lord from the graveyard in defense system, which is really, really awesome. We then play three copies of Banishment to round out the spells, which is lets you add any Dark Lord card from your deck to your hand. It can be a spell, it can be a trap, it can be a monster, it can be anything, which is what's really, really really cool about this deck so that's it for the uh spells guys let's get into the traps so for the traps we're actually playing all four of the dark lord well i like four of the five one of them is really bad so we're just playing these four so you're playing a single copy of uprising a single copy of the sanctified dark lord a single copy of rebellion and a single copy of enchantment so basically what each of these do you're going to use their effects by copying them in the graveyard by putting them back in the deck because they all cost by sending a dark lord monster from your hand or facing your field to the graveyard to activate them but if you copy their effects they lose the cost and you don't have to pay the cost to activate them because you're mimicking the effect not the cost which is what's really cool so what this card does what each of them do going down the line from left to right uprising lets you fusion summon a dark lord fusion monster which is going to be your copy of the first dark lord and you can do that during your opponent's turn with one of your dark lord copying effects and also it has the ability then you can gain life points equal to the original attack of the monster sent to the graveyard to activate this effect but you're never going to send the monster to the graveyard to activate the fusion effect which is not that big of a deal for this deck card 
The Sanctified Dark Lord negates the effect of one face of monster on the field until the end phase of the turn and you gain life points equal to that monster. Rebellion lets you pop a card on your opponent's side of the field, which is really good. And then Enchantment lets you take a monster that your opponent has and you take control of it. So this card's really, really good as well. So you're just playing one of each to have well-rounded kind of with the deck. You can send them to the graveyard pretty easily and discard them with a shell and send them to the graveyard with Nastin really easily. And so getting them into the graveyard is no problem. So that's it for the main deck, guys. Let's Let's get into the extra deck. So for the extra deck, we're playing a single copy of the first Dark Lord. So this card is absolutely crazy, and you're going to want to summon this the majority of the time on your opponent's turn with Dark Lord Uprising, with copying it with like in a Shell, Nazten, Nargol, any, any of the ones that you want to copy it with. This card is going to be really, really helpful, and you always want to put Morning Star into this card when you're fusion summoning him. So what this card does is your opponent cannot target Fairy Monster, you can control a card effect, and also you can only use the effect of this card once per turn. It has the ability that if this field card is fusion summoned using Dark Lord Morning Star as a material, then you can destroy all cards your opponent controls. That's why you want to use this card by copying Uprising on your opponent's turn to be able to summon this against your opponent to immediately disrupt them and destroy everything they have. And then during the main phase, quick effect, you can pay a thousand life points to special summon any fairy monster from your hand or graveyard and defense position. It does take three dark fairy monsters to summon this card, which is usually going to be your copy of Morningstar and two other Dark Lord monsters to summon this, but hey, it's not that bad. It's really actually quite easy to summon. We then play two copies of the Condemned Dark Lord, which if you're getting pushed to go first, you're going to want to go for her the majority of the time. She lets you tribute some fairy monsters that require two tributes by banishing monsters from your graveyard instead. And then she also has the ability that you can uh, discard a card to take a Dark Lord monster from your deck and either add it to your hand or send it to the graveyard. And then also, once per turn during the end phase, you can gain 500 life points for each fairy monster on the field. Side note for anybody who didn't notice, she's actually the uh, person who is on um, the forbidden cards like droplets and she's actually on droplets, chalice, uh, Lance, all of them. Like, there's actually lore behind it, and this is all connected to the Solemn cards as well, which if you guys have looked, side note, on Rebellion, it's actually way back here, it's actually the Solemn guy. So just, just cool little side note for you guys. We're then playing a single copy of Access Code because it gives us additional pops against our opponent. You don't have to play this card. It's not super necessary. So if you want to play Boral Load, you can if you're trying to make the deck on a budget. You can drop for Boral Load, Boral Sword, whichever one you want to. One copy of Unicorn because it spins stuff. One copy of Phoenix because it pops spells and traps. One copy of IP because it can help you go into your Unicorn during your opponent's turn. One copy of Cyframe Lord Omega. Now Omega is really good in this deck now because of the game a combo that I was telling you guys about. You can actually bait your opponent really easily with this deck to go into Omega. We play a single copy of number 97 because it can give you a 9,000 beat stick. One copy of number 38 and a single copy of number 100. So basically the reason you're playing these is you can use nine, or number 97, detach materials off of this card, take both of these and then summon both of these to your field and then use the number 38 to overlay on under the copy of number 100 and then you can detach the number 38 off to be able to make this card gain the attack of all ranks on the field, which you'll still have the number 97 and you'll have the number 100. So it'll go up to uh, 9,000 on summon, which is pretty good. We then play a single copy of number 35 because it can gain a lot of attack points because all monsters you control gain attack points and defense points equal the difference between your life points and your opponent's life points. Um, and then also that is a lot of attack points because you're paying a thousand life points for each copy of an effect. And I will say, you're going to do that a lot in this deck, and so this card comes in really, really handy. And then I play the Train Package, which is a single copy of Rail Cannon Gustav Max, just to burn my opponent for 2,000 every single turn. One copy of number 81, because it's unaffected by everything. And then a single copy of Dreadnought Cannon Juggernaut Libby. Dreadnought Cannon Juggernaut Libby is just an additional OTK for me, because this card is really, really, really good. Just a punch for game. Basically, these are both engines to punch for game, and then the 35 is here, because it's really easy to summon two level 10s your side of the field to help kind of like push for game a little bit easier so that's it for the deck guys i hope you did enjoy it it's a really fun deck to play with um if you guys have never played dark lord you definitely should it's pretty budget i would have to say you can probably get the entire main deck and all the necessary like necessary outside of like access code uh the cards in the main deck you can probably get them for probably like 50 bucks like it's not expensive to be able to actually build this deck um especially if you go to like through tcg player like it's really really easy to build this deck and it's super cheap so anyways guys this is dark Home duels don't forget to like comment subscribe hit the bell there so you can come part notification squad and definitely check out the patreon on the description below and we'll see you guys in the next video see you later guys